Good day. For those of you who don't know me, my name is August Harder, and in this topic we're going to discuss trade reversals. So in this topic we're going to see a mechanism that is used to visit all of the objects within a tree data structure. We're going to look at both breadth first and depth first reversals, two different, two different orders in which we can visit those elements. Depth first reversals can be broken into pre-order and post-order depth first reversals. We're going to look at some applications and general guidelines for devising traversals and implementing them. Now, if our objects are being stored in either an array or a linked list, well, it's quite easy to visit all of the elements. We would do so sequentially, starting with the first one. However, when we got to the deck data structure, we also saw, saw the iterator classes in C++. Again, the iterator class allows you to step through all of the objects in, for example, a deck, a doubly ended queue. Now the question is, what do we do if we're trying to step through all of the objects in a tree structure? How do we do so in a predictable and efficient manner? And of course, efficient means we want to use data and runtime to visit n elements in the container but hopefully we're going to use less than data and memory. Hopefully the memory usage will be little o of n. Now we've already seen one traversal. A breadth first traversal visits all nodes at depth k before it goes on to visit the nodes at depth k plus one. And we saw that we could implement this easily using a queue. Another approach, however, is a depth first traversal. So rather than visiting at each depth, instead try to go down as deep as possible, always visiting the children, until we reach a leaf node, in which case we backtrack until there's another child we can visit, and we go down again as deep as possible. A breadth first reversal visits all nodes at a given depth first. We're implementing with a queue, the runtime is theta of n. The memory, however, is potentially expensive. Basically, we, the maximum size of the queue will be the maximum number of nodes at a particular depth, which could actually be quite expensive. How do we implement it? Well, we create a queue and we push the root node onto the queue. Then, while the queue was not empty, we would pop the node at the front of the queue we would push all the children of that pop node onto the queue and then repeat. While the queue is not empty, repeat the process and so on and so forth. And this would go on until finally we popped K and the depth, breadth first reversal would be finished. Now depth first reversals on the other hand use a backtracking algorithm. We go down as deep as possible until we can't go any further, and then we backtrack until we find another node that we can go down as deep as possible, and so on and so forth. And we can repeat this until we visit every single node within the tree. So basically, at any node, we proceed to visit the next child that has not yet been visited. Once we've visited all the children, we backtrack to the parent and repeat. Once we've visited, we finish the breadth first reversal, depth first reversal, after we've visited all of the children of the root and we're finished with the root. Now, this is a depth first reversal. Notice, however, that while we're going down and back up again, notice there's a first time we visit node B. And then once we visit all the children, we're about to exit and go back to A, and we never visit B again. With every other node, there's a first point and a last point in time that we visit that particular node. If we list the nodes in the order in which they appear the first time we see them in our backtracking algorithm, we call this a pre-order depth first traversal, or we are printing the nodes in the pre-order visiting. Alternatively, if we print the nodes the last time we see them, 
D, C, F, G, E, B, J, K, L, I, M, H, and A. That defines a post-order depth-first traversal. Now, most traversals will perform, depth-first traversals at least, will perform some operation before visiting any of the children and some operation after visiting all of the children. Here's an example, an implementation of a depth-first traversal on our simple tree class. You'll recall that the simple tree stored the value of the node in the member variable element and every single instance had also a singly linked list which stored an array, uh, sorry, which stored a linked list of pointers to the children. So before we step through all of the children, we will perform some pre-visit operation. In this case, the pre-visit operation is just printing an opening parenthesis and the element itself. We will then go through all of the children and we will call recursively a depth-first traversal on each of the children. Once we have performed a depth-first traversal on all of the children, we are in the post-visit phase and in this case we will simply print a closing parenthesis. Now on this particular tree, what happens? We start the root node and we print out an opening parenthesis and the node A. We then step through each of its children, calling depth first traversal on B first, we print an opening parenthesis and a B, and then visit all of its children. Print an opening parenthesis of the C, opening parenthesis D, but D has no other children, or it has no children, so now we print a closing parenthesis and return. C has no more children, so we print a closing parenthesis and return. B, however, has another child, so we'll recursively call a depth-first traversal on B's second child. We would repeat this procedure until we have finally returned to the root node and visited all of its children. Now, how do we implement this rather than recursively? Well, we could actually explicitly implement it using a stack. In fact, we sort of know that by calling it recursively, we are using a stack because we're implicitly using the function stack. However, if we want to explicitly use a stack, we create a stack and push the root node onto the stack. While the stack is not empty, pop the top node and push all of its children onto the node, but in reverse order. That's just to make sure that when we're popping them, they pop out in order. Now, the runtime is still going to be theta of n. The objects on this stack are all of the unvisited siblings of all the nodes from the current node back up to the root. Well, if every single node has a maximum of two children, then essentially the size of the stack will be no greater than theta h, where h is the number, is the height of the tree. The recursive implementation is identical. Its memory usage is also going to be theta of h, assuming a fixed number of nodes for each children, or a maximum number of nodes for each children. Recursion is just hiding the memory that is used. Now, how do we design? What guidelines do we have for creating depth-first reversals? Well, we're going to use a depth-first reversal whenever the parent needs information from all of its children or the children needs information about its parent or all of its ancestors. So in designing a depth-first traversal, we have to consider, before we traverse through the children, what initializations must we perform, what operations must be calculated before we visit the children. Then in recursively traversing through the children, we have to determine what information must be passed on to the children, and at the same time, what information is going to have to be collected from the children to perform the operation we want. Once all of the children have been traversed, what do we have to do with the information that we've collected from the children? 
Having finished, we then have to, again, determine what has to be passed back to the parent of the current node. We're going to look at some examples. The second and the third will just use directory structures, but the first will just look at finding the height of a tree. And we've already seen that in the previous topic. But now we'll describe it in terms of a depth first traversal. We'll also look at printing a hierarchical structure and determining memory usage. Well, height is a recursive function, and in fact, it is a depth first traversal. Before the visit, children are vi traversed, we assume that a node has no children, and so we'll just initialize its current height to be equal to zero. Then we will recursively step through each of the children, asking each of the children, what is your height? And again, that is a recursive function. It will ask its children as well. However, each time we query one of the children, it will return its height, and then we will update our height if one plus that returned height is greater than the current height. Having visited all of the children, we will then return the current height back to the parent. So in this case, we're looking at the root node. The root node recursively asks the left child, what is your height? Well, the left child look, asks both of its children, what's your height? Well, after recursively calling here, we determine the left subtree is zero, is height five. So the height of this node is at least six. However, it could be greater, so we have to ask the right subtree, what is your height? Well, its height is two. 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 is less than 6, so the height of this tree is 6, and we return 6 to the parent. The root node says, ah, 6. So the first child has height 6, therefore the height of this root node must be at least 7. We ask the right subtree, what's your height? Again, we recursively call, its height is 1, well, 2 is less than 7, so we'll use the height 7. Alternatively, let's say we want to have a directory structure, and a directory structure is hierarchical in nature, and suppose we have the root directory, two subdirectories, and in user we have bin and local, in var we have admin, cron, and logs. Let's say we want to display this directory structure in this format. So at each step we indent one further depth. The further down we go, the further in we indent, and then at each level we print all of the directories. How are we going to do that? Well, what information do we need? Well, we need to tab in. And each time we go one depth down, we have to tab in a little bit further. So before the children are traversed, we must print the current node. But we have to print the current node indented first. Once we've printed the name of the current directory, then we have to print a slash. Then we have to recursively call print on all of the children. What information do we have to pass onto the children? Well, we have to pass one higher tabbing level than the current node. No information has to be passed back from the children. Once we finish printing all of the subchildren of user, we just carry on and print var. Once all the children have been traversed, we are finished. Well, we can implement this as a class, as a member function, print, it's constant. However, in this case, we're going to pass in the depth. Now, to implement this, we're going to assume we have some function print tabs. It takes an integer as an argument, and we're just going to say that if we pass it a value of 3, it will print 3 tabs, in which case we can then print something after it. So, we pass in the depth. The first thing we do is print that many tabs, and then we print the name of the current directory, followed by a slash and an end-of-line character. Then we will recursively call each of the children, and we will tell each of the subdirectories to print themselves at a depth plus one level. So add one more level to the number of tabs. We don't 
have to do anything afterwards, so we simply return once we've printed all the children. Here's an alternative problem. What happens if we want to determine memory usage? So given a tree, we want to print each directory name, and we want to print the memory used within that directory plus the memory used in all of its subdirectories. So every directory will contain files. How much memory is being used in all of those files that are descendant from a particular directory? Well, we can't print the memory used of a particular directory until we've accumulated all the information of how much memory all of its descendants are using. So now we're going to be printing this backwards. Let's say we have this directory structure here. 12 kilobytes are used here in this directory. This directory has 5 kilobytes of files. And the root directory happens to have 7 kilobytes of files. In this case, we're going to print the children, the deepest children first. Having printed all the children, we will print the parent and the memory usage of both the parent and all of its children. So we're visiting the children first before we print for the current node. And we will do this recursively. This sounds like a depth first reversal. However, now we're doing the printing at the end after we've visited all of the children. So what do we have to do? Well, once again, we do require a tabbing level, which is initially zero at the root. However, before we visit any of the children, we have to initialize the memory usage as that which is currently used in the current directory only. Then we will recursively call the directory usage on each of the children. We will pass on one greater than the current tab level onto the children, and each child must return the memory used within its subdirectories. Having accessed each child, we will increment the amount of memory used in the current directory, and once all these children have been traversed, we will print the appropriate number of tabs for the current directory. We will print the name of the directory followed by a slash and a space, and then we will print that memory usage. So how can we actually implement this? Again, we pass depth and we set the usage to be what's assumed to be the current usage of the current tree, uh, of the current directory. Then we will step through all of the children, and at each point we will ask the child, how much memory are you using? We will pass depth plus one because we want all those children to be printed at a deeper level, one further level of indentation. However, that will also, D will also return the memory usage of that child and all of its descendants, and so we'll add that onto memory usage. We will print the appropriate number of tabs, we'll print the name of the directory, a slash, and how much memory is being used. Having done so, we will return the memory usage of this tree and all of its descendants. So in summary, we've covered two types of traversals, depth first, breadth first traversal and a breadth first traversal. A depth first traversal is a little bit more complex. We're doing using backtracking to step through the tree and now we have to decide what information is needed by the children of the parent and its ancestors at the same time, what information do the children have to return to the parent? We looked at some applications and we determined how we could structure a, breadth for, a depth first traversal. Again, by determining what information is needed at which point and what operations must be performed at which point. So thank you very much and have a good day.